Hey, Sean, how you doing? Good, John. How are you today? Good, good. Um, just, I mean, we're halfway through the season and we keep hearing about, you know, Josh, you know, from, from the start of the season, like he had the first game jitters or whatever. And yesterday he had to find, you know, that, that inner peace through, through, through halftime. Um, how, is there a concern that maybe, I mean, that just, I guess the inconsistencies that keep on cropping up as well as you're playing, um, seem to still be there, especially in the, you know, with, with, with Josh talking about his inconsistencies and on offense. I mean, look, you, he's human, right. And, um, you know, you're going to have games that may start off a certain way in this case. And I think the positive of it is really, John, that he was able to find his rhythm and, you know, the second half there and, and uh, you know, uh, lead us to a couple of touchdown drives and, and important situations in the game there. I get that. I, I'm just trying to be a, a bit of a contrarian because you're halfway through the season. And how good is this team right now, do you think? Well, we're just really focused on trying to get better this week. Um, so we can beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's really what, what we're focused on, trying to improve every week and become a better football team every week. That's that's really the growth mindset that we try and embrace every every week here. Fair enough. Thanks, Sean. Hey, John. Yes. Can you put that's that's two words, two fancy words in two days now, contrarian and zen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a thesaurus or a dictionary to look all this stuff up here, man. Well, hey, well, I, I, I'm trying to keep uh, people educated, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just keep, I'll just keep staying on. I, I learned by uh, being on these Zoom calls. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Coach uh, Pat Freeman from 105.5 The Beat. How are you today? Good, Pat. How are you? I have a question for you. I know you have a strong relationship with the great John Wooden. Did you realize yesterday that that was the first game ever in that stadium refereed by an all African American referee crew? I did. Yeah, that was uh, that was great to see and and, uh, and and good to work with those guys uh, yesterday throughout the game. Thought they did a good job. And my second part of the question, did they give you a satisfactory explanation of the play right before halftime? It looked like it was a miss encroachment uh, on their part. Did they give you a satisfactory explanation of why it wasn't called? Uh, I got an explanation, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. So whether it's <laughs> satisfactory or not, um, I got an explanation, which is all I can ask for at that uh, in that situation. So, All right. Thank you, Coach. Sure. Sure thing. Hey, Sean, Thad Brown, good to see you, man. You too, Thad. Um, on that play, you know, you guys have been a team that like to work, you know, try and draw guys off sides, have a quarterback that's been pretty good with it. Even if the offside was called, it was explained on TV that the, the intentional grounding wouldn't have negated it. So for a team that does that a lot, what lessons did you learn from it? Because obviously that one did not go anywhere near the way you wanted it to go. Yeah, I think overall, really, we got to be better with that, Thad. I mean, it's... Um, it didn't go the way it didn't go the way that we intended it to uh, from start to finish, and 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 so we've got to do a better job executing uh, in those situations. Is it is it simply that maybe the Josh needs to be more ready to actually run a play as opposed to trying to officiate the game while he's playing quarterback, or is that too simple a way to look at it? It's probably. Uh, I mean, I think it's probably just too simple to look at it that way. There's just a lot of things we can do better. We've had other situations like that this year. Um, we, we've got to execute at a higher level, more detail, more discipline. Um, and that's, that's really what it comes down to. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Yep. Sean, Sal here from WGR. Thanks as always for doing this. Sure. Thanks, Sal. Uh, a couple of decisions I want to ask you about. Number one, um, first series of the game for the Dolphins, second play, I believe it was, how close did you come to challenging if uh, Tua's knee was on the ground before he got rid of it? Yeah, real close. Um, you know, we were getting, I was getting information from upstairs. Uh, I didn't see the replay in house at that time. And, and, uh, and then it was third down. thought we had him in a third and long and advantageous situation for us. Uh, they converted obviously. Um, but just felt like the information I was getting was it's close. And, uh, because of the cost benefit of that, I felt like we had him in a situation that we could get off the field in. And, uh, I always try and weigh that as well as, it was the first series of the game. 
Um, never really want to lose timeouts, especially early in the game like that. So, uh, or late in the game, obviously as well, but um, felt like, you know, we still had them in, a, in an advantageous situation for us. And the second one is Tyler Bass's 57 yard field goal. I talked to him after the game. He gave you a lot of credit for having faith in him. You talked pregame about what yard line, obviously the wind could factor in. Just what was the process of going through and determining that that was a spot that you were going to allow him to attempt that field goal? Yeah, um, Tyler does a great job, great operation. I mean, the whole 11 guys, all, all 11 guys that were out there, that's what it takes to execute at that level uh, in the way that they did. And um, Heath Farwell, a special teams coach, um, said he liked it, said Tyler liked you know where we were in the situation. And that helps me because I know that that's an option and the options on the table. And, um, you know, we were in one of those situations where you're kind of in between and, and you want to go for it. You know, you're fourth and I think it would have been fourth and long, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so he liked it. So we went with it. Thanks, Coach. Sure thing. Hey, Sean, Josh Reed here. Thanks for taking a little bit of time. Um, question for you. When you see somebody like Derrick Henry go down, you know, obviously, you know what he means to the Titans. Looks like it's going to be a long-term kind of injury. How much does that kind of remind you that no matter how much you put into the X's and O's type of stuff, that there is a bit of luck on the injury side of things that goes into this whole thing? Yeah, it reminds me of Jim Johnson, who I worked with in Philadelphia, um, would always say that. He'd say you need a little bit of luck, and luck comes in different forms, right? Staying healthy is one of them, and the ball bouncing your way at times uh, is another, and especially in pivotal, pivotal games and pivotal moments of pivotal games. So that all, that all um, I think you need to have some of that as well. So, Yeah, that's all, that's all I had, Sean. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure thing. Hi, Sean. Uh, kind of, it's Nick Fierro here. I want to ask about your offensive line. You know, obviously the uh, injury to Brown um, forced you to shuffle around some positions. What did you see from them and uh, from that uh, that offensive line in the game? And um, do you have an update uh, with us, with Feliciano? Yeah, so I'll start with uh, Feliciano. He'll be week to week at this point. Um, he's got a he's got a calf uh, strain there. So um, overall, I mean. You know, I say overall as an offense, again, you know, you, you watch the game. We didn't get off to a good enough start, and um, eventually we found a rhythm, and I would say that that's the same with our offensive line. I do appreciate uh, the way that they pass blocked. Um, and then as, as we came, as we kind of got going as an offense, they got going as well, and, and sometimes those work hand in hand. Um, you know, you always want to establish the line of scrimmage earlier in the game than what we did, and I think that's an area we can all improve on. Was it uh, tough for, you know, for Feliciano to switch sides, um, you know, after playing um, all year on the one side and, and go to another? And was there ever a consideration to just not do that? And, um, you know, just plug no, he's very, time. yeah, I know where you're coming from. He, he's very comfortable playing that, that side as is, as is Ike playing the other side. That's, that's where we ended the season for the most part last year, Nick. And, and so uh, uh, both players were very comfortable. Um, in those situations. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Sean. Matt Bovet here. Hope you're doing well. Um, quick question. Yesterday, Cole Beasley said after the game that this is not a game that you want to play, but sometimes you need to play to ultimately benefit down the road. And I was wondering if you could expand on that kind of thought. Yeah, I mean, Cole, That's I think that's an accurate statement. Cole knows ball, and and um, he's been around a long time. And, and uh, you know, you want to – you don't want to be in those games, but that's, that's the NFL every week. Um, and so what you find yourself doing is you want to become a better football team through the process of uh, finding answers, finding solutions, finding plays in games like that. And, and uh, I mean, that's really, that's really the nature of the NFL every week. So um, I think you learn a lot about yourself in those moments. You learn a lot about your team, your teammates, and um and I was I was glad to see us perform the way we did in the second half because I think that is we'll have to rely on that uh, this week and, and the weeks ahead as well. I know you can't tell us specifics, but we're about 24 hours away from the NFL trade deadline. What does this next day look like for you and for Brandon? Do you guys have conversations kind of about, you know, if this is available, we do this or do you just kind of wait and see what happens? 
Well, you, you know us. We're always looking to, uh, to improve our football team any way we can. And I know uh, this time of year in particular, Brandon is, heads that up uh, pretty much without me in terms of um, the different things he looks at. So uh, we do have conversations. But overall, as you know, like I said, we're, we're going to try and find any way we can to improve our football team. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, Sean, going off of that, do you feel the need, especially with how many guys you have returning on this roster and have been around for a while, do you feel the need to even address the upcoming trade deadline with the roster? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, um, these guys, especially the older, the older guys know. Um, and I think that's, you know, I've had a chance to sit back in the off season and watch trade deadlines come and go on other professional sports. And, um, I think it's just something you, you go through and it's, it's part of the business. And, um, you know, I, I think there is an element of respect in terms of we have respect for our players, knowing that that's, I'm sure, not easy for, for those guys. And, and I think they respect, I would hope, our position as well, that uh, we're always going to try and do the best thing we can for our team. And then with Isaiah, obviously, he's, he's had some really bright moments as a return man this year. He's had some, some other moments as well. How do you feel he's he's done? Because I know ultimately you and Heath probably say the number one thing is to make sure that that the ball is secure above anything else. Yeah, I mean, I would. He's had some really good moments, to your point, John, and and uh, uh, I'm happy to see that. I think he's growing and, and developing, and has put in a lot of work all, going back to the off season. And then he continues every week. He's one of our hardest working uh, guys that we have in the building, and uh, he's in here early, stays late, and. Uh, puts a lot of time in on the practice field also even after practice. So real proud of him for that. Um, you know, putting the ball on, on the ground is an issue and, and we have to get that corrected. And, and I know he knows that. And, uh, and so um, that's where we go back to one of the things we go back to work on this week. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, I just want to go back to Tyler Bass for a second. You said that on that 57 yard field goal, you said he liked it and that Keith Farwell was telling you, you know, he feels good from here. Is that something that he's that you're hearing like as the drive's going on, or is that a decision pregame saying, "Hey, I feel good that direction from 55 to 60"? Yeah, both. So just to kind of give you guys a feel for how that works, so uh, usually we'll get a pretty good feel in pregame based on conditions, weather, whatnot, uh, what the line is, and then um, on that specific drive, then we will. Uh, follow up on the line and, and, or if, if he likes it, if we're beyond the line, even so. Um, and then it comes into a decision on, on my part to say, Hey, what do we want to do here? So um, all that has to happen in a, in a short amount of time. Um, and hopefully we're, we're right more than we're wrong. And uh, I just have a lot, so much confidence in Tyler and, and Reed and, and Matt, they just do a phenomenal job. Have you ever been around a kicker like Tyler. I know we, you know, some of the players talk about that. He's a football player, not just a kicker. And he's got the eye black and we you talk about how his swag. Have you ever been around? You've been around football a long time. Ever been around a kicker like Tyler. <laughs> I love, I love the fact that he's, that he's an athlete. He's a football player. He's got the, the one, I still haven't figured out what one, what one strip of eye black does on a cloudy day, but if it puts him in his, in his, in his space, um, then yeah, I'll, I'll take it. So, I mean, he's a phenomenal athlete and, and the guys respect the heck out. Appreciate it, Sean. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Sean, it's Jay with the Buffalo news. Uh, do you have any sense? Uh, I know it's early in the week, whether Spencer, uh, may be able to return to practice this week. Well, I think he's, he's moving in the right direction. I don't know yet on, on exactly what, uh, say Wednesday will look like Jay. So we'll just, I just got to take it one more day um, here and, and get a better feel as of, uh, as of tomorrow. Okay. And then I, I guess, you know, same question for Dawson and maybe might be the same answer, but same question for Dawson as well. Same, same answer. Yeah. Day to day. Uh, he's also improving. So we'll just see what the rest of the week looks like. Sounds good. Thanks, Sean. You got it. Hey, Sean, yesterday Ed Oliver was saying he felt he was very free when he was playing. Um, just what did you make of his day and what do you think led to that? Yeah, I thought he had a, I thought he had a really good day. He uh, factored in a lot of plays, Catherine. He thought he played really well. Um, he's really developing and he's put in a lot of time. And, and so give him credit for it. He's, he's really starting to process the 
uh, what it looks like to play the position uh, in a complete way, run and pass. So uh, real proud of what he's done the last couple of weeks. And then I'll ask the really tough question. Are you going to catch Josh on the Manning cast tonight at all? Uh, is he on tonight? Uh, oh, good for yes. Him. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll try and turn it on and uh, I'm sure it'll be a knowing Josh's sense of humor and, and the Manning brothers sense of humor. That'll be uh that'll be good TV for everyone out there. All the viewing, all the viewing folk out there. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Hey, Sean, I wondered uh, just after you watched the tape today, what your biggest takeaway was in terms of the performance of your defense, just your overall opinion of how they played yesterday. Yeah, I thought it was, um, you know, look, I, I have high standards, right? So, and those, those guys know that and the coaches know, I probably drive the coaches crazy. Um, but I thought it was a really good game plan. Miami, give them credit, came out with a good plan. Uh, Leslie and the defensive staff countered. And, um, you know, really aside from that last drive on the touchdown drive, I thought they played, played good ball, good football. And in particular, <clears throat> excuse me, the, you know, I know it was a, kind of a freak play, but the sudden change defense is always important. The one right before half. And then um, to come out after half and have, I think it was three straight three and outs really set us up in good field position to, to cash in with the offense, which uh, they did a great job. All right. If it's any consolation to you, I never thought in a million years, I'd be using the word Zen in an NFL post game. <laughs> so you're not the only one learning some things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>